Hey, Manual Therapy friends, welcome to Manual Therapy Thursdays. I'm Dr. David. I'm going to cover a manual therapy concept or technique with you every Thursday um, from here on out indefinitely. So I'm super pumped and excited about it. One of my favorite topics to talk about is manual therapy within physical therapy, of course. So um, today's topic, we're going to cover the movement of the cervical spine. Really, it's the movement in all the spine, but we're gonna talk about the cervical spine directly. Of course, you got seven vertebrae here, and the top two move a little bit different than the bottom, obviously. So we're gonna talk about the connection between C2, 3, and down after that. Um, you've got facet joints on each side, so you have a pair of facet joints, and each of the facet joints have the ability to move up and forward or down and back. So we're talking about the inferior facet of each vertebrae. So let's just be specific here. If you can take a look, here's the C2 right facet, um, C2 three right facet, and there's the inferior facet of C2 articulating on the superior facet of C3 on the right. So the when we talk about motion, we're talking about the superior facets motion. So it can go up and forward or down and back, and it moves in conjunction with the one on the other side. So let's just get the motions down real quick, and then we'll talk about problems associated with this. If the facets are moving, if they're both moving up and forward, then it creates flexion at the segment. If they're both moving down and back, then it creates extension at the segment. If the right one is moving down and back, and the left one is moving up and forward, so they're moving in opposites, it's creating either side bending or rotation. If you have the left one moving down and back and the right one moving up and forward, then it's creating side bending or rotation to the left. Sorry, the other one was to the right. So you have to have that memorized in male therapy. That's just a concept that you need ingrained in your head and be able to feel it in your hands as well as you're touching a spine, you know, somebody's neck, for instance, and you can move it. Really, the neck is the only place you can actually wrap your hands around the spine and feel these motions really clearly. So that's why I'm talking about it in this way. You can't do it in the, in the thoracic spine very easily or the lumbar spine very easily. There's ways to do it, but it's just, it's not as palpable. You just can't feel it very well. So when we're talking about problems, you can get facet joints stuck in a down and back position or an up and forward position. And what this looks like, I'm just going to run through a quick sample here so that we don't take too much time. Um, if you're right facet joint is stuck in down and back at C2, C3. So let's look at, at our spine here. Um, C2, C3 is stuck in down and back. Then that, that means that it can't open. It can't go up and forward. It can't, um, that means there's going to be restricted left side bending and left rotation as well as flexion. But extension should be okay because it's already down and back. Right side bending and right rotation technically should be okay pending any other issues throughout the spine. So you have to problem solve like that as you feel each segment and you just know all these motions by heart and you can feel it in your hands, then it's easy to start diagnosing what levels are affected and in which directions are affected. So then you can begin to get very precise treatments and help the patient out. And that's when you can get these cool cervical manipulation techniques and you know, even just mobilizing it in the proper direction. For instance, if it's stuck in down and back, you better be mobilizing into up and forward on that segment, on that facet. And then um, as you move it, it, it sometimes just will go. Once you lock out all the segments above and below and you focus on that one spot that's real stuck, it'll begin to move. Now, real quick side note, where, what I'm referencing here is what I call an acute facet restriction. So this is more like the person that woke up with a stiff neck and you find, you know, you problem solve, troubleshoot through all this and you find that one problem area, then you free it up, all of a sudden their stiff neck is gone and they feel a lot better. But in somebody who's chronically got neck problems, maybe even arthritic, you're not gonna mobilize that very well or manipulate it at all. It's just, if it's truly, you know, moderate to severe arthritis, uh, you, you can mobilize it and it will gradually improve, but it's not gonna free up tremendously after one session. It's gonna take some time for sure. So just be careful when looking at your patients with this. If you start to go apply this, if you think they've got neck arthritis or you know because of an MRI or x-ray or something like that, then um, be careful. Now there's a possibility to have radiographic 
arthritis, in other words, they have arthritis, but we all know that it happens as we age anyway. And if you can restore normal motion in this person's neck, even though they have arthritis, then they actually had an acute facet restriction or a more, you know, a less chronic facet restriction that hasn't really become limited by arthritis. So just take that into consideration too. It's not a black and white deal. I always second guess and question any sort of um, referrals we get from the doctors or when the patients themselves will start to tell us, I've got arthritis. I, I believe them that they've got arthritis, but I always question, is it that they've got neck pain and stiffness because of the arthritis? Or is that the arthritis that was gonna be there anyway because they're getting a little older and it happens to all of us, but it's not really truly causing the restriction? Question mark. So anyways, um, I hope this helps. And um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, comment, you can private message me here. Um, if you have any questions, you can um, uh, shoot us, you can call us as well. I'm happy to, to talk with you over the phone. I love mentoring physical therapists. Have a great day. Bye-bye.